students now this is the last stage of the chromosomal preparation step this is one of the very final step that is known as the slide preparation we will now prepare the slides for visualizing the chromosomes so you can see we have the slides here keep in mind the slide should be in, in this tilted fashion they have to be placed in tilted fashion so that when we put the cells on the slides they can easily move along with the length of the slides now again i take this tip this is the supernatant keep in mind that this is the one of that supernatant which was quite clear and the, it has pellet in it now i mix it well so that the pellet get mixed in it and i will take around let's say 500 microliter of it and just i will add a two to three drops on each side one i have dropped it then one two So let it to move down the line now we have added the cells on the slides after dropping the cells now let it to be moved down to the uh, bottom of the slide and then let it to be dried for further drying we will put these both slides into an oven at 60 degree centigrade they will remain overnight there in the oven for 60 degree centigrade and then next day we will use the same slide for the process of bending okay guys now as you can see we have very well dried slides they have been aged very well now we will bend these slides the bending is a very important part of the chromosome preparation because without bending we cannot identify individual chromosomes or the problems or abrasions which are present in the chromosomes so that's why bending is really one of the most important step in the process of chromosome preparation there are different types of bending but before coming to those different types of bending let me give you a little bit about or tell you a little bit about the principle of bending in chromosomal bending we make use of the differential composition of the chromosome differential composition in the sense that you know the chromosomes are made up of dna and proteins the proteins make the dna in the chromosome in a compactified form in other words chromosomes are in their shape as we look at them is because of the proteins the second differential composition of chromosome is because of the different frequency of a t and c and g nucleotides in different portions of the chromosome in certain portions of the chromosomes a and t are numerous in the other c and g nucleotides are numerous as a result of which we see differential composition of chromosome along their whole length so some part of the chromosome consequently is known as the heterochromaton and the some part is known as euchromatin in the bending we make use of those differences so that in certain parts of the chromosome we have darker bands and the other parts we have lighter band because each chromosome have differential composition as a result each chromosome will give different bands and on the basis of those differences in the bands we can say that this is chromosome number 1 this is chromosome number 2 this is chromosome number 3 and so on and so forth okay. now let's move to its bending process in the chromosome bending we have different solution one is the i mean before i straight away come to the bending let me tell you a little bit about different types of bending there is g bending there is c bending there is t bending there is r bending there is q bending 
all these are different types of chromosomal bending but for the sake of clarity and for the sake of better understanding of the whole process of bending we will focus here for on g bending but keep in mind that whatever bending is it it again depends it is because of the reason that the chromosomes are of different composition so the bending patterns we see as a result of all these types of bendings are because of the different composition of the chromosomes so we are going to show you the g bending now because this is the one of the most commonly used technique it is used in each and every lab in in the world in pakistan or whatsoever so let's now show you how we do the g bending g here is for jimza is because of the stain the jimza stain which we use for the g bending now in the g bending this is the first solution this one this is the trypsin it contains trypsin it in you know trypsin is an enzyme which digests the proteins this is the phosphate buffer and this is the jimza stain so first we will trypsinize the slide for around let's say 10 to 20 seconds you give a trial and error you can do it for 40 seconds you can do it for 60 seconds but we generally do it for 20 seconds is work for us sometimes we also do it for 10 seconds but that's again after the trial and error so i have a watch i am doing it for 20 seconds first 15 second now i dip it in the buffer now after the treatment with the buffer now i am dipping it into the jimza so for 3 minutes i will dip it into the jimza okay now we have this slide very well stained now with the jimza uh, let's we take it out and then clean it a little bit with the distilled water here gently now it's well clean it's well clean now so let us put it over here to get dry yeah, fine now it's here it could be dried in 10 to 15 minutes or you can air dry it with any instrument if you have and we will after it gets dried we will see it in the microscope okay guys now let us see the final results of our 3 to 4 day of hard work now we will see the chromosomes in the microscope and i am sure we will have a very very nice photograph why i am sure because we really work very hard for it okay so this is the microscope you know let's turn on the light let's first do it on uh, just scan for the chromosomes at at the magnification of 10 at 10x okay so we use the 10x uh, objective lens actually you know magnification is nothing but the product of magnification of the objective lens and the eyepiece so yes now i can see there lots of lot of lots of metaphases here now let's see these metaphases at higher resolution that is what 40x yeah. wow now this is beautiful this is really really lovely see yeah. now i will soon share with you the photograph of what i have seen and let me tell you guys there is not anything in the whole world or maybe in the whole universe as far as we know more beautiful than this figure the chromosomes our unit the unit of our inheritance with us and thank you very much for watching and listening